By many measures, 2022 was a bumpy year for Australia's environment, with widespread rainfall supporting improved plant growth and helping deliver a national health score of 8.7 out of 10, the highest score since 2011. That's the main conclusion from Australia's environment, the latest of an annual series of environmental condition reports released by TURN and the Australian National University on Tuesday the 28th of March 2023. The report and its website provide a summary of key environmental indicators and how they changed in 2022. The Australia's Environment Report and Data Explorer are created by analysing vast amounts of satellite and on-ground data on a supercomputer using algorithms and computer prediction models. Of particular importance are long-term time series such as those created by many ANCRIS projects including TURN. These time series allow long-term changes, patterns and trends in our environment to be assessed which is critical to the ongoing management of our environment. The algorithms and models use the open data to summarize 15 key environmental indicators. They include indicators of weather, water availability and soil and vegetation condition. From these 15 indicators, seven were used to calculate overall environmental condition scores for Australia and for different regions. The third and very wet La Nina year brought very good wetland and vegetation growth conditions to Australia. In many cases, it was the best year since 2011 or even before. It's been a great year for soils and vegetation and for the ecosystems that depend on them. There's been little fire, but there's been a lot of flooding last year. The Great Barrier Reef experienced its fourth mass bleaching event in seven years. Fortunately, coral recovery remained good throughout the year. Good rainfall across Australia's cropping regions meant it was a good year for farming, except of course for those farmers who lost their crops to excessive rainfall or flooding. Not all parts of Australia received high rainfall last year, with areas such as the Top End, Inland Western Australia and Western Tasmania missing out. There was both good news and bad news for Australia's biodiversity in 2022. A third wet year helped post-fire recovery and wetland communities but biodiversity continued to decline overall. Another 30 species were added to the EPBC Act list of threatened species, bringing the total number to 1,973, a 43% increase since 2000. No species were declared extinct in 2022, which is good news, and two were downlisted. The humpback whale was removed from the list due to a remarkable population recovery. This year, the Threatened Species Index is included in Australia's Environment Report. We estimate changes in the abundance of threatened and near-threatened species with a three-year lag. Estimates for 2019, before the Black Summer fires, show a continued decline in Australia's threatened birds, mammals and plants. Our unique and precious biodiversity remains under considerable pressure, and this will increase in coming years as climate impacts worsen. But the evidence is mounting that when we enact protection and invest in conservation, we can bend the curve of species declines. Report cards can be downloaded for any administrative or geographic region of Australia, including local government areas, electorates and bioregions, for example. Produced annually, the Joint Turn ANU Environmental Condition Reporting complements Australia's State of the Environment Reporting. You can explore the suite of products and download the data at ozenv.online. We at TURN look forward to hearing from you about this and any of our national ecosystem monitoring data sets and tools.